Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Ethan Chazen and I am a New York based executive coach and organizational culture transformation consultant. Today's webinar is entitled Surviving in a Pandemic, How to Reset Your Business from a Sales Model to Cultivating Relationships. So let me start out by saying welcome to today's webinar. The critical importance of reframing your business for lasting success is that in today's current global pandemic environment, individuals are just not emotionally or otherwise capable of being sold to. To reset and to refocus your business, you need to have a fundamental transformation in the way you approach cultivating new relationships and maintaining existing relationships in a global pandemic. So let's start with an understanding of what leadership is. Because as a business owner, as a sales professional, as an executive, you understand that leadership isn't a thing. And it isn't about not getting bogged down in characteristics of what a leader is. A leader, first and foremost, is an individual who focuses on making other people feel better, safer, more secure. And so it's important to understand that what we're all dealing with in the middle of a global pandemic, COVID-19, continues to run roughshod over our society. It's scary. The future is scary and uncertain. So the people who follow you, whether it's your employees or your customers, they need reassurance from you because they are so fearful of an unknown future. So what this requires from you to navigate your business and navigate your sales through these scary, uncertain times is an entirely new business model that's needed for success. So what I'd like you to think about long and hard is shifting your mindset away from a sales centric approach to instead cultivating more um, mutually beneficial, deeper relationship engagements. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a moment and bear with me as I share my screen. And so this is what we're going to focus on today. In today's global pandemic, we're going to focus on a new model for business survival. And to go from survive to thrive, you need to shift your mindset. So when we talk about relationships from a business perspective, what are we really talking about with your customers? And, and, and let me drop a hint. The notion of renew and retain. So this may seem like semantics, but it goes deeper into the conceptual framework of successful organizations. The renewal is the mere act that your client has of saying, yep, I wanna continue this relationship with you. It's the end result of a well-intentioned, well-nurtured relationship. So that's what the renewal is. Retention, retention is a lengthy, ongoing, day in, day out relationship. That's the difference. The renewal is the mere act of saying, yes, you have my permission to continue. Retention is all the collective sense. You may have heard customer, lifetime, journey. The retention is the step-by-step -step relationship cultivation. So the renewals is, it's a rubber stamp. Yep, we're moving forward. They renew their subscription service, whatever the model is, cable, internet. It's something that happens as a result. The retention is the deeper approval of you in that relationship. It's a vote of confidence that the client exhibits towards you as you consistently exceeding their expectations of what you're going to deliver them in terms of their wants, their needs, and their desires. The customer is saying, in effect, I choose not to replace you. It's an endorsement. It's a rubber stamp of you. The relationship further extended between you and your organization with your customers is a connection. And it certainly winds itself through your employees. So they come first. And then the employee as an extension of your relationship with that employee out to your customer base. So why is all of this important right now? more so than ever before in the midst of a global pandemic. It's because the selling process is a transaction. You want to buy some software? You want to buy some software? That's a one-off. 
that is completely separate of and and the antithesis of cultivating life, lifetime client value. So what I'd like you to get into your head as a thought process for behavior modification is no longer sell. Stop it. Instead, think about sales in a new way as a relationship cultivation. So if you think about your customer lifetime value, think about it as a model, right? So any model will do, but let's take RFVP, which stands for recency, frequency, volume, and profit. So what you're saying is the customer lifetime value is some way to gauge quantifiably the output or the result of all of those activities you invested in the relationship. RFVP, recency, when was the last time they purchased from you? Frequency, how often do they buy into what you're selling? Volume on a per relationship sale basis. What's the amount, size? And then the profit or margin is how much it takes to service that customer, knowing that not all two customers are the same, and it requires different collective sets of actions and activities to nurture that relationship or put a price tag on that. In terms of what that relationship is worth to you, in terms of what that customer pays back versus what it took to nurture that relationship. So here's the kicker. Here's the challenge. It's the epitome of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, where a relatively small number of your customers generate a fairly large amount of your volume. There are three kinds of customer, and this is what we know. We know there's one customer who could care less about your problem issues. They don't care about anything that you contend with. There's no loyalty whatsoever. There's no trust. They'll leave you in a heartbeat if you in any way fail to live up to what their expectations are. We call those customers mercenaries. And here's the challenge. That's 80% of your customer base. Go through your Rolodex. You can identify your mercenaries have a very superficial, low level. I want it. I want it now. Give it to me or I'll leave you mindset. That's 80%. So as we dig a little bit deeper and go deeper into relationship cultivation, they have a superficial relationship to the mercenaries with you. That leads to the next level of customer in terms of relationship you've nurtured. And they're basically happy. They'll stay with you for the most part. They'll give you repeat business. There is a level of trust that you've developed and cultivated in that relationship. They're basically loyal. Congratulations. We call those customers loyalists. Now that's about 17, 18% of your customer base. So if you do the math between the mercenaries and the loyalists combined, there's a relatively small microscopic slice of your customer universe that are so in love with what you do. They love everything about you. They refer people to you. They purchase from you. They give you insights on your social media. They give you shout outs. They give you constructive uh, comments on your on your website. They're the people who are with you thick and thin. Price increase, no problem. They see the long-term relationship value of you through your organization, and they'll stay with you through thick and thin. They are your VIP brand ambassadors or what we call raving fans. They're about two to three percent of your customer base. So how do you identify which is which in your customer Rolodex? And how do you treat these different relationships differently? So the goal and my consulting practice, I'm always working with organizations to help increase, not their sales. The sales is an outcome. That's like a renewal. That's the end product of an effective relationship nurtured. Look at the top of your customer pyramid, those most loyal, valuable VIP brand ambassadors, what is your process for cultivating mercenaries to loyalists and then from loyalists to apostles? And do you have a process in place like outlined in the slide deck for starting to identify mercenaries to move up to loyal and loyalists to move up the lifetime customer value chain from loyal to a VIP or brand ambassador? What does this require? As I talk to you about cultivating more return on your business investment in relationships with customers, it requires a fundamental skill set, which we refer to, I refer to in my training as a soft skill. Sure, it's emotionally intelligent relationship engagement. Call it empathy so that you understand there's a way to measure your customer's experiences with you. 
So you're roller coastering them through the relationship journey. And we know that there's four stops in the relationship journey. What are they? They're easy to understand because they mirror and reflect like identically to humanistic personal relationship stages. Awareness, they're not gonna buy from you if they don't know you're out there. Kind of like dating, so to speak. So that first phase is awareness. That's through all of your traditional marketing activities. The second stage is, all right, we know you're out there. We, un we understand what you have to offer us. Let us try it. We'll try your service. We'll sign up for a one week or one month or we'll make one, um, one engagement with you. So that second stage, the exploration is a trial phase. It's kind of like going on a second date. So the third stage in the relationship cultivation is a commitment. Are they making a transactional demonstration of their intent to stay with you? It's a purchase. So once they get through that first purchase, then it leads to a second and a third and subsequently multiple purchases throughout the relationship engagement until the relationship invariably terminates or dissolves. And that's that fourth stage. Even the best relationships with the best customers, most profitable, invariably they will dissolve over time. And so you can bounce around from relationship stage to stage, but here's the point. You need in your sales organization, in your marketing organization, on your team, you need to understand even you yourself, as you escalate potential customers to customers to repeat customers with you, it's different stages require different skills. So the first stage I mentioned before, marketing, right? Marketing is the collective set of all the activities around sales promotion, advertising, public relations, those three discrete activities that take that person who has a want, need, and income to afford what you have to do, interested in purchasing from you. That's the marketing stage one skills. So in order to get somebody who you've identified as being imminently qualified to buy from you, they want you what you have, they need what you have, they buy from you that first time, that's a sale. So that's what we refer to as the selling process. But the minute that's done, that first transaction, congratulations, now we get into the heart and soul of selling, not in terms of transactions, but in terms of nurturing stronger relationship engagement to get that purchase to the second purchase and the third purchase until ultimately we go from a mercenary who bought from you once to the loyal customer who's now bought from you a few times to ultimately the brand ambassador who's now a raving, raving fan advocate VIP or apostle. And that's relationship cultivation. And we know that a relatively small number of your customer base drives a significant majority of your revenue. And those are your high level loyal customers and your brand ambassadors. So this is all an opportunity over the last year as many businesses of all size, whether they're startups, family businesses, or multinational corporations, they're constantly struggling to figure out how to tweak their business model to not only survive, but thrive and remain relevant with their customers. How do you do that? It's simple. Go back to look at your customer lifetime journey. What that means is every touch point that it takes from the moment that you identify a potential customer, all the activities or interactions or communications it takes to walk that customer through that lifetime, through awareness of you, to trial or exploration, the second stage to the third stage of commitment purchase to the fourth stage, ultimately they leave you. Every step along the way, you're framing. And that's what this new field of customer relationship cultivation is called customer journey analytics. So that's powerful. And so what do you do with that? How do you measure, not from your perspective, but from these, what you perceive to be really valuable relationships with your customers, how do you go back and make sure that you understand that your customers are in alignment with how you feel about the relationship, ask them. And so this is what a net promoter score sounds like. Hey, thank you so much for your business. Let me ask you a question. How likely are you on a scale from zero, meaning not at all, to 10, meaning absolutely comfortable with, suggesting or recommending 
our company to one of your best friends or a family member. So a detractor, somebody says on a scale of zero to 10, not at all, zero to six, no way, not interested. You've got, ladies and gentlemen, a mercenary. Somebody who's relatively passive, they're Sweden, they're neutral, they're seven or eight. No, nah, you might think that that sounds like on a scale of zero to 100. Yeah, yeah, they're favorably inclined. No, nah, they're pretty much ambivalent. They're loyal to a certain extent, but they'll leave you in a heartbeat. What we really want is to identify anytime you ask somebody, would you refer somebody close to you to our organization to serve their wants, needs, desires? A nine and a 10 tells you, yep, they're a loyal customer. They may even be a VIP, but they are predisposed to want to recommend us. And so that's the value in doing this. But let me digress a little bit from talking about stop selling, start nurturing relationships, to talk about what a relationship is, means to identify five levels of human need. And here's the kicker. Most organizations I have coached and consult with or even worked in over the last 35 years, they all do not understand the levels of humanistic need. So let me walk you through them. There are, from the obvious stated needs to the most secret hidden needs, five levels of relationship engagement need. So let's say you're in a new relationship with a new customer and you're asking them what they need from you. Or in your own personal relationships, you can emulate this model. This is universal appeal in terms of the five level of needs to our personal relationship cultivation and our business cultivation. The first is in a relationship when somebody tells you what they need. That's pretty straightforward, right? They told you. And the extent to which you personally or through your business and professional relationships rely on what somebody tells you, you're doomed for failure. Imagine this visual of an iceberg with only certain visible iceberg aspects above waterline. This is the Titanic. If you rely only on what people tell you, that's a problem. That's that first level stated need, because what you're really missing out on is nearly all of the relationship as a potential. What, and I do this in my coaching consulting practice, what you want to think about is when somebody tells you what they want, you want to confirm, you want to clarify, you want to make sure you understand. So if they say something to you along the lines of, I want to join your fitness center, I want to purchase your fitness machinery, they're telling you that, they're stating it. And that does almost no good in a relationship to stop there. And most organizations do, most salespeople do. The real need is you say, okay, well, let me understand um, what you're saying. You're looking for a suite or a brand or a set of products that I can exercise with at home on my own. Is that correct? Yeah. So there's a bit of translation, confirmation, affirmation. So that second level is the real name, the real need that they've articulated back to you. And this is the problem. Even very enlightened relationships do tend to stop at that real level of need. And that's a shame because you'll never get beyond the mercenary. What's hidden from plain view of below the water level is all the things in that relationship they're not telling you. It's, it's gone uncommunicated or unstated. And unfortunately, most organizations are happy with this superficial um, need identification where they confirm, but then they don't dive deeper. You're not gonna be like that. Moving forward to grow your business, not just survive, but thrive during the global pandemic, you're gonna dive deeper into the unstated needs. What are they not telling you? And you know, what requ you know what's required at that point? Empathy for sure, caring about others, that's what it means. But to cultivate the relationship in a meaningful fashion from the moment they do that transactional purchase from you. So now let's say you further dive into the things that they haven't told you as the relationship progresses. At some point, you're going to, based on serving their unspoken needs as part of this relationship dance, you're going to get to the point where this service level, this relationship model leads the customer, your client to say, wow, wow, you could do that for me? That's a delight level where now you might hear it, you might see it. They're moving from relatively loyal to just start becoming your brand ambassador. You would do that for me. Nobody else has taken the time to offer that. 
And then as you progress even further in the relationship, not the sale, the sale is a transaction. It's cha-ching, that's a one and done. To nurture greater lifetime value between you and your customer base is to have them go, wow, you would do that for me. And then as you dive deeper beyond that fourth delight level is the final ultimate deepest level of relationship, personal or business-wise, doesn't matter, it's the same is the secret level of need is something that that relationship would never share with you because they might not even consciously admit it to themselves. So in our model, I'm looking to buy a fit. I'm looking to purchase a fitness, a, a gym membership from you stated. Okay. What's really going on? Why? Well, because I want to lose 30 pounds. Real, real need. Perfectly understandable. Sign me up today. No. Well, hold on a second. What else is it that you're looking for? I want to get um, more health and cardio fitness. I have a pre, I'm predisposed to adult onset diabetes. I have heart disease in my family. Oh, you didn't mention that before, unstated. So let's talk a little bit about that. Sure, we can sign you up for a membership, but that's not what we're looking at right now. What are some of the things long-term well, that you're really interested in. Well, you know, it would be ideal is if I got my bad cholesterol down to this, that would be fantastic. And if I built up, um, you know, increase my good cholesterol level by such and such, oh, wow, okay, we can do that through blah, 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 blah. Wow, you would do that for me? Oh, absolutely. If you wanted a fitness center, go to a fitness center. We're here to have a long-term relationship where we can kind of get to that level. Wow. You know, nobody ever really talked to me about that. Well, hold on a second. Let's go a little bit deeper. What's really, what's really going on here? Like if you had one thing that we could deliver for you in terms of our of lasting relationship, why did you come in in the first place? Or why did you call us the first place? Well, you know what? Um, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I've gotten out of shape over the last few years. And um, my daughter is, I believe, getting ready to get engaged. And just the thought that keeps coming up in my head is I want to dance at her wedding. I want the father-daughter dance. That's that secret level. And now that we've gone through all of those five levels of need in any relationship, the farther you go, the greater the relationship value. So what I'm talking about is change your mindset in a global pandemic where we're all dealing with so much stress, anxiety, uncertainty, fear, be indispensable. The sale has nothing to do with this. That's an outcome that will or organically materialize. Poof, it'll appear. When you start to invest in your relationships, what you'll get out of them will just happen as if by magic. So how do you do that? Is to share information, share resources, be a facilitator, connect them, introduce them to people, but that's what we're talking about. So let me ask you a question. What's working right now? What's working for your business? Not in terms of sales or products or access to labor, talent, freelance, stuff. that's all superficial stuff. At the deepest level, what's working in terms of the relationships that you specifically personally use? to cultivate relationships based on being empathetic, building trust, and not about what I want, need, desire as a business owner or salesperson or an executive, but how do I serve? Here's the concern. And I hear this day in, day out with my, my clients when I do consulting. But if we don't sell, we're not gonna stay in business. And it doesn't matter, all this other stuff is great kind of neat to have, but you're talking theoretical about all this relationship stuff. No, I have bills to pay and I need to do them now. And I understand that. I actually understand that a lot. But what it means is taking a deep breath and saying, hold on a second. That's a surefire recipe for getting your business right off the cliff. Instead, what does this, all of this relationship cultivation have to do with business growth, business survival, especially in a global pandemic with half a million dead Americans? What does all of this have to do? It has to do with understanding other people's pain and needs and wants and the challenges they face, the problems that keep them up at night. And at every stage of awareness, trial, commitment to solution, every stage of that relationship continuum, you're not selling, that's a transaction. You're serving, you're delivering and exceeding their wildest expectations and you're creating standards for your organization of how to serve. 
And it's all based on empathy. And so here are some things you can do from sharing painful experiences you have when speaking to customers or potential clients. Never interrupt. And by the way, don't ever say I understand again, even if you think you do, because it makes what they're going through less unique to them. And always be conversational. The empathy or the, the difference between empathy and sympathy is this. Sympathy is, mm, I feel what you're going through. Empathy is you internalize that pain, that frustration, that fear, and you own it and embrace it so that you can then in turn bring down their anger, alleviate their stress, or remove their uncertainty, especially by engaging you and your organization to provide those services. Um, so be constantly monitoring if you're in an organization, a business, a nonprofit, government entity, it doesn't matter. Reduce the negative press. Be on top of what's being said about you. And at all times, understand this. Our customers don't buy from us. It's the Simon Sinek TED Talk. Start with why. They don't care what you do, and they really don't care how you do it. What they really do care about is how you make them feel. And how do you do that? build stronger relationships. And it's based on being a servant master. If you can be a hunter or a farmer, the hunter goes out, the rainmaker lands the big account, brings in the big account, cha-ching, lots of money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the farmer. From a relationship perspective, visualize the farmer going out and cultivating day in and day out through serving others a crop of customer lifetime cultivation that will lead you to a profitable crop to take to market by planting seeds day in, day out, of diving to the fifth deepest secret level of need from the stated upfront first level of need. Walk in their shoes, spend time with them, even if we can't physically be around people right now because of social distancing, but be with them virtually. Work hard to understand their goals, their challenges, their fears, their short and long-term objectives. What the word for this is, is partnership. And that's what we're talking about. So kind of to show you just how insane it is that most organizations think they're doing a great job when they're doing a horrible job of serving organizations. So according to a customer raise survey from a few years ago, that there's a truly a divergent wide Grand Canyon gap between what customers are saying they do and what clients are saying they receive. So 94% of all customers, according to the survey said, they want to be treated with dignity and yet a little more than one in three said that that's what they received. 80 plus percent said they want to be reassured their problem won't happen again. And only one in five, 21% said, yeah, we're getting that. 83% said they want their contact in your organization to have empathy for what they're going through. And only 23% actually feel that way. Lastly, they want to hear I'm sorry. 76% want to hear I'm sorry. And only 32% are hearing I'm sorry. How do you know this is the case? Ask your customers. We don't ask enough. These are some other things that customers say they want. So going back a few years, a Bain study found that only 8% of customers, excuse me, of organizations deliver truly amazing customer experience. But when the, but when the survey asked companies to rate themselves, 80% thought they delivered a superior experience. What's going on? There's a gap, a delta, between what our customers are saying they get from us and what we deliver because we aren't spending enough time in their shoes in the relationship. Understand their fears. What keeps them up at night? Are you a set of solutions to the problems they face? So that's what we're talking about. So why do so many organizations fail to deliver empathetic customer engagement? I, this is what I get out of my consulting practice, working with over 300 organizations. There's a organizational, institutional, top-down lack of emotional intelligence or emotional quotient. Your employees who are tasked with taking care of your customers, they're dealing with their own issues right now through a global pandemic. It's impossible for them to get out of their own shoes to have meaningful relationships based on empathy with their customers. Also, your organization has eroded in its informal culture. It's worn down its culture to the point where you do not have the ability institutionally 
to relate to your customer base. You're operating on a service model based on mercenary customers. And that's not where the value is. That may be where a majority of your customer relationships are. That's not where the value is. So I see this over and over and over again through not, no, not so much an admission of the senior leadership team of my customers that they conceptualize their customers as cha-ching cash registers with limbs, but I see it in practice. You see it through every step of that customer lifetime journey that there's an implicit mindset that organizations see their customers as a set of transactional cash register transactions. That's not what we're talking about. This webinar is predicated to one thing only, getting you to think and rethink you and your organizations, especially your sales teams, way of engaging your customers in a pandemic from a distance virtually to get out of selling mindset and into relationship mindset and it's engagement. So take, for example, on this screen, it says a VIP relationship funnel. And if you think about every step in the customer journey with you, if you think about every interaction you have with your customers, from signing them up for an e-newsletter, to having a virtual sales call, to connecting with them on LinkedIn, to meeting with them at an online conference, every touch point from day one to day 365 in the calendar year should have a point value. And if you ran across the column headers of the different relationship touch points, at the very end, it says total touch point or whatever your end, your total quantified number of engagement points is, you could literally rank that and see who your VIP brand ambassadors are in terms of relationship touch points all the way down to the hardcore mercenaries. And that's how you rethink your sales funnel. So. In closing today's webinar, and thank you so much for taking time to check us out at thechasinggroup.com. But my final thoughts to you are this. In everything you do, in everything you do in terms of cultivating relationships with existing customers, in terms of going out and meeting new customers, every interaction that you and by association your organization has with outside stakeholders or relationships, Every interaction is a promise, a promise that your reputation, your brand is unique, invaluable, memorable. And that's it. That is the most quintessential classical definition of an organizational and a reputational brand. So Dale Carnegie said, we are all united by one single desire to be valued by another. Now, as much if not more so than ever before, those words hold true and dear. So please send me messages. Let me know if you found this webinar to be useful. A few additional resources are Simon Sinek, Good Leaders Make You Feel Safe. Daniel Goldman, Why Aren't We More Compassionate? Daniel Goldman's the godfather of the field of emotional intelligence. Or Steve Van Belgum, Imagine Customers Becoming Friends. So having said that, I wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can go to our website, thechasengroup.com. You can email me at ethan at thechasengroup or message or call me on my mobile. I appreciate your time and we look forward to serving you here at the Chasing Group moving forward. Thank you so much.